I'll end it, eh? Um... Yeah, go on. It's the last show. All right. In view of all we've been through together, in view of everything that you have contributed to the programme... Which is an awful lot. That's I mean, right. I, I, if uh, Mike Briscoe wants me to, you know, I'll take over from you. Yes, yes, I'm sure you will. Um... Bearing in mind everything that you've done over the last two and a half years... Yeah? No, you can't. And it's over to... Good heavens! In, uh, in Prestwich, the first time on the programme, live in person, the man... You've heard his letters. You've read his newspaper. But tonight, you hear his voice... From Prestwich, the confectioner and philosopher, Mr. William Lawrence. Mr. Reeve. Mr. Lawrence. Hello. We sort of meet at last. Well, I mean, over the counter, we've met on many occasions. But, um... I don't remember that. Do you not? No. Oh, dear. Oh, I'm Yeah, sorry. sorry. Right, you're right, you're right. Um, this cake, what do I do with it? You've baked one. One? Well, it's, it, it, it is only one, but it's a, it's a huge cake. I mean, you did promise um, a vast collection of stars appearing on the programme tonight, and uh, it, what do we do with it? It uh, doesn't seem, actually, to... Uh, not many people seem to have taken up the offer of the old uh, party, in fact. Were you aware that uh, Ruth Mildred and I did call down with the cake earlier on this evening? I, Huck Vale told me... Yeah. That you put in an appearance, but that our security forces turned you away, mistaking you for some drunken troublemakers. No, well, this wasn't the case. Ah. Oh, no. Huckbell will be, have been lying again to cover his own backside, possibly, which is one of the things possibly. he does, yeah. There were a few armed guards available, but... Yeah. Um, not to worry, anyway. We have our entourage around us here, um, from uh, Presswich. The friendly cat is stretching himself as I look at him, and uh, Ruth Mildred is looking at... Uh, well, she's not looking at anything. She's listening to a wet, wet, wet tape. Is but, she really? Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, and she's mm -hmm. moving. Uh, no, it's okay. And um, Darren, I believe, is tucked up in bed. And uh, Cliff, the pig man, yeah. uh, is busy roofing his house with all the bannocks that I gave him. What a lot of bannocks. What a lot of bannocks, yes. Mr Lawrence, you are a funny, funny man. Thank you. I must offer my gratitude for the contributions that you have made to the programme. You understand that there will be no remuneration whatsoever. That was in the small print. Yes. Nonetheless, I shall pop down and perhaps avail myself of a bagel. Or two. Or two, yeah. Well, two bagels is, is better than one. I've always said that. Have you always said that? I've said it since 1983. Oh, right. So you've recently said that. Fairly, relatively recently. Hey, anyway, look, that doesn't matter. Right. I can only offer once again my thanks for your contributions to the programme. I'm, and I I'm shall, gratified. I shall pop in for a vanilla slice. Do it will be waiting for you. Do you do those? Um, <clears throat> we do them with cream. Rather than the custard? The, the custard, they, they don't make it anymore. Do they not? Have they, no. they finished that? Yes. It squirts out the sides anyway, doesn't it? Yes, it does. It's, it's a trouble. Can I ask... Uh, will you answer me one final question? Please, please ask away. Have you got elephant's feet? <sighs> Crow's feet, yes. Elephant's feet. Stop. Still a funny, funny man to the very last. Down to his last gingerbread crumble. Mr Lawrence of Presswich. And now... Oh, they're all coming out now, eh? The Night of the Living Dead. In Stockport, Mr Chapman... For his swan song. Did we get cut off then? Well, uh, no. Well, y your voice faded. Uh, it, well, I'm sorry well. to uh, see the situation developing like this, but I think it'll turn up for the better, Jim. Your talent's not going unnoticed, uh, especially with the special bands. Oh, thank <laughs> you. I always get a job with them then, eh? Huh? I can always get a job with them. Well, I had a run in with them in Manchester recently, so. Uh, You'll probably get one, too. The trench coat man. Yeah. Anyway, did you watch the comrades uh, tonight? The Red Army bet? Uh, no, when? When was that on? It was, uh, it was on uh, BBC Two tonight, 7.30, something like that. Oh, we're not allowed to watch BBC Two in oh. the newsroom. Anyway, 
it, it would have surprised you because the, watching the old sergeant talking to the boys there and comparing it with the way they teach them in our army and the Yanks and all the rest of the world, you know, he actually said, if you understood Russian, he actually said to the uh, young fellas, Pajalista. And uh, yes, of course, well, I don't know, I know what that means, yeah. but uh, th obviously there will be some people listening who don't. Well, I told them. Well, well, yeah, I'm... Well, it's unheard of in the history of the British Army for the sergeant to say please, isn't it? Re what? Hmm? Really? Yes. Oh, this is all. This is all very dangerous. This, yeah. this sounds like a touch of perestroika to me. No, I, I, I look at these programmes uh, uh, critically, and uh, I, I can recall one I, that I saw where they were doing a bit of scaffolding, uh, some people fixing up an old mosque or something like that. And uh, I looked at the scaffolding, and I, I thought, by George, if I was a clerk who works, I'd have that job stopped right now. So that one will be coming up, and, and uh, take a look at it, and you'll see what I mean. Right, I shall, uh, of course, I shall have the evenings to myself now. Yeah. Although I shall be listening to Piccadilly Radio considerably, yeah. I might take in the occasional bit of televisual entertainment. Well, I, I hope you'll get on with your reading, Jim. There's so much good stuff coming out. And also, watching television, uh, the speaker was on earlier about pensions. If you've been watching... Uh, Channel 4 tonight on the commentary, somebody was on there rocketing at the Queen Mother. Oh, um, who? Oh, on the, co on the commentary thing. It was, it, it was nice to hear that uh, Australian geezer having a go at Mrs Thatcher. Well, he didn't have a go. They're afraid to have a go at her. I mean, the woman insults people's intelligence, doesn't she? Um, yes, which of course is a skill in itself. Well, I don't know. I don't know whether it's skill or it's just absolute ignorance. I mean, the grocer's daughter from Grantham, this is this is all the British Empire can produce. I mean, when you look back in history at some of the characters we've had... Frank Chapman, speaking of empire? Well, I mean, it, it, you have to recognise a historical fact, don't you? Oh, I suppose so, unless you're a Stalinist, of course. Well, I, I was talking to somebody the other day about this programme about Winston Churchill that was on late at night it w would have uh, interfered with your program but uh, they just wouldn't accept that Churchill in his day did some very very good things hmm. he battled for the miners hmm. mind you I'm speaking before uh, before the first world war right. he actually fought in parliament to get the miners uh, pithead bass yeah. and uh, shorter hours and things like that and both he and uh, Lloyd George went to Germany and saw the way Bismarck was doing it, who told him, you know, you'd better knock a few crumbs off the table or you're going to lose the lot. Right. So we got, up, we got pensions. That's right. Oh, that's right, a trip by Lloyd, was it 1906? Yeah, it was, it was uh, before the First World War, before yeah. I was born, anyway. That's right. Yeah. You see, but people can't recognise that, uh, as in M M Tung has always said, uh, uh, everything has its opposite in, contained within itself, you see. That's very true, I think. Part of the contradictions that Churchill in his day was a liberal. Oh, but indeed. Scratch a liberal and find a fascist. An old saying, but a true one. Yeah. Franklin, uh, Franklin, time is pressing. Other punters are waiting. Yeah. I do not wish to be discourteous in any way. No. All the best. But we have, done, we have done our bit. We have not toppled any shibboleths. No. We have not. We, we have been as iconoclastic as we are permitted to be within the system. Mm -hmm. Let us hope that we have sown a seed. Yes. And we yes. shall continue to do so. All right. Farewell, Jim. Um, adieu. No, au revoir. I think is the best thing we can say. I shall see you at the. Oh, he's gone. How very, how very unfortunate. I was just going to come out with a beauty then as well. I shall see you at the celestial barricades, Frank. You'll be there. He was there firing pellets with the strings of his harp. Twelve minutes to one. It's nearly all over. So, let's go to Radcliffe and rekindle one of the less pleasant memories. Jason Prosser. Hey, what's that supposed to mean? What? Less pleasant it's, memories. It's your name. Oh. Oh, well, that's all right, then. Okay, fine. Right, our kid. Well... If you've got a bet, if you, you know, if you've got a good one to come up, you better get rid of it. I beg pardon. Well, you just said to him, you got a good one, and he went, so you won't come out of it. That was the line, the celestial barricades. Oh, 
I was going to say then, if you've got a good one, you better get it up, you know what I mean? Off your chest before you go. Never mind about getting it up if you've got a good one. Come on, we know all about that. What do you want? Well, before I start, it's... when was this supposed to be leaving? Pardon? He's been told tonight that he's leaving. I'm not leaving, I'm being shifted. Where to? Well, just somewhere else. Or somewhere you. That's what? part of the fun. What, are you going on to this new station? Um, I, I'm not really sure. It doesn't matter anyway. Yeah, it does. Does it? Oh. Well, if well, if you are, I'll have to tune into a new thing, what? Huh? Well, I'll send you I'll send you a personal invitation to listen to my programme. Oh, that'll right? be all right. I'll put you on the mailing list. <laughs> you are? all right. In fact, for a small fee, I'll come round to your house and we'll do the programme from there. Is that a promise? Uh. Well. No. Ah, uh, yeah, I was thinking about that myself. No, it was, a, it was an attack of utter lunacy. <laughs> it must be, mate. You know what I mean? It's crazy me living out here, never mind you. Did you want anything, or, or did you? were you hoping to order well, a pizza? Well, I was just uh, listening on the phone before. Is, is Huckvale a blue as well? I think Mr Huckvale has little interest in... Uh... No, you kept going on about this picture of all these idiots. Hey, he, was, he was nodding in... Um... Well... Vague, familiar, vague recognition of, uh... As if to say, like, go away. Mike Summerby, Colin Bell, that sort of thing. Yeah, they're all balmies, aren't they? I think not. Ah, uh, they must have been. What, is it late... What, I mean, late 60s? Yes. Yeah. Late 60s, early 70s. Yeah. When we were going through a transition period, you know what I mean? Yeah. Look, do you actually want to contribute anything to what should, in actual fact, be a moving and momentous occasion, or have you just come in here to gibber in your Radcliffian way? Hey, <laughs> don't get me in this Radcliffian way, you know what I mean? I don't want to know about it. It's not to do with me. All right, then, get off. Oh, well, it's always nice to part on terms which, are, which have become familiar over the months. I think the final punter this evening will be in Withington, Karen Jones. Hello, Jim. Karen. How are you? Ooh, a little numb. Oh, listen, anyway, I've, I've had to break a habit of a lifetime and agree with Jimmy White tonight. What? Well, what he said about Mike Briscoe, I think it's wrong that you're going on days. I mean... What am I going to do at night? Well, far be it from me to suggest anything. <laughs> you see, this is it. You won't be able to have your, your snotty digs either if you're working one till three, will you? We shall try to, um, while perhaps altering the format a little, still try to maintain the same spirit, the same uh, acerbity. Uh -huh. If you take my meaning. Yes. Now, will this one, two, three be a phone-in? I believe there will be an element of audience participation, yes. Ah, right. I mean, it doesn't seem so many weeks ago um, I had a little speech wrote out welcoming you back, and here I am now saying goodbye. Well, life's like that, isn't it? You never know the minute, I always say. Well, that's right. It doesn't make me feel so bad now as I'm leaving Manchester. Oh, where are you going? Well, I, I wouldn't like to say yet, but I shall drop you a little line and tell you anyway. Oh, please do. Is it somewhere where you'll still be able to hear lovely Piccadilly radio? Um, well, I drove there the other day, mm. um, and when I got to the top of the hill, I could hear um, Rebecca once. Oh, dear. But whether I'll be able to hear it in the house, I don't know. I hope so. Mm. Well, can't you get a house at the top of the hill? It is quite near the top of the hill, so I hope so. Well, this is preposterous. Well, look... <laughs> anyway, it was really nice to hear the, the old voices tonight. Albert's a killer as usual. He was... Uh, he doesn't seem to be mellowing, really, does he? I think he's slightly getting worse, if anything. Uh, yes, yes. Um, I think he started earlier as well this evening. He did. I thought, oh, God, he's effing and jeffing already. But it was very nice hearing from him tonight, I think. Such And I'm life. going to miss all my old friends, Jim. Would you like to say a big schmaltzy farewell to all your friends and chums throughout the Greater Manchester area? Yes. I'd like to say goodbye to Steve Hookvale. Wouldn't we all? <laughs> and to Albert and Harriet and Paul 
Moss Side and Paul Brown and Hamish Brown oh. 